Hello and welcome to PE Academy. So this is example 5 under mesh analysis. So we've looked at four different examples and an introduction to what mesh analysis is all about. So if you have watched the last previous video, um, I want to believe you should be able to attempt this. This question is similar to the one we looked at in example 4, just as the position of the items are different. Now in this circuit, this is the question, it says, find the value of V1 if the current through 1 ohm resistor is equals to 0. So we are looking for the value of V1 and we are told that if the current that is passing through this particular resistor 1 ohm is equals to 0. So like I said, if you watch the previous part, I want you to pause this video and try to attempt it just to test your understanding or your knowledge uh, under mesh analysis with what we've done so far. And let me know if you're able to get it at the end of this video. Let me know if you're able to arrive at the correct answer or at, uh, in the comment section. And if you get stuck anywhere, do let me know where you get stuck. All right, so let's go ahead with this mesh analysis example five. So the first thing I will always want us to do is to, what, is to identify the nodes. So let's identify the nodes. So this is a node here. So let's call this A, B, let's call this node C, let's call this node D, so let's call this points E, F, G, and then H. So the next thing we are going to do is to, for each of these mesh, remember, I want to believe by now you should know how to, what a mesh is and how to identify mesh. So we have three mesh, here, yeah, three meshes, one, two, and three. So what we are going to do is we are going to pick a current direction for each of those mesh. So if you are following, you notice that I do pick a clockwise direction. So you can decide to, um, just to test your understanding and proper, you can look at some of the previous examples we've done. You can also switch the current direction and then solve using catch of voltage law. You notice that we are still going to arrive at, uh, at the same answer. Your polarities might be different, your direction might be different, but at the end of the day, if uh, you are going to be having uh, uh, similar answers. All right, so in this direction, and you can also have more than one direction in, in a circuit. For example, I can decide to use clockwise here as a clockwise here and take clockwise here. I can play around with it. You are still going to, if you follow the right uh, step using catcher voltage law, you still arrive at your answer. All right, so using a clockwise direction here. So this is mesh one. And then let's take the current here as I1. So for mesh two, let's take the current here as I2. And then this is mesh three. Let's take it as I3. So. Let me indicate here as mesh 3. So this is mesh 2. There's no space, but just know that this is mesh 2. So the next thing for us to do is to uh, the, the polarities. So for the voltage source, the longer side positive, shorter side negative. This is positive, negative. So now let's add polarities to the uh, to the resistors. So for the mesh 1, for this 10 ohm resistor, this is going to be plus, minus. In this direction, this is going to be plus, minus. And that is it for mesh 1. So let's go to the mesh 2. For this 5 ohm resistor, in the direction of current I2 is going to be plus minus is going to be plus minus plus minus so that is it here for mesh 3 is going to be plus minus plus minus and then that is it so the next thing is we are going to be applying a uh, catch-up voltage law to each uh, to each of the mesh so let's start with mesh 1 so so for mesh 1 the parts for mesh 1 is A A B G, H, and back to A. So that will be A, B, G, H, and then back to A. So I'll just indicate it so that you don't get confused with what you are working with. All right, so now let's start applying catch of voltage load. Now, before we start, like I said, this question is similar to the one we looked in the previously. You say we are looking for this V, and we are told that uh, the current that is through the 1 ohm resistor, look at this is the 1 ohm resistor, is zero. Now, with this, that means if you look at this one ohm resistor, the current that is flowing through it is I3. Only I3 is flowing, unlike here where we have I3 and I2 that is flowing through here. But here it is only I3. And we are told that the current that is flowing through um, this one ohm resistor is zero. That means, so that means our I3 is equals to what? Zero amperes. So that's what it means. So with, with that, we've been able to get the value of I3. So in solving, now when we are solving, anywhere we come across I3, we just replace it with zero. So if you're able to do that, you'll be fine. So now let's let's continue. So from mesh one, starting from point A. Now for this 10 ohm resistor, from positive to negative, that is going to be minus 10 multiplied by I1, 10 I1. So let's continue. Positive to negative, 5 ohm resistor, that will be minus 5, and then current I1, I1. So we also have from positive to negative, due to I2, I mean from negative to positive rather, that will be plus 5i2. 
so g to h nothing here from h to a we have a voltage source which is v1 from negative to positive that will be plus v1 then equals to zero so now let's simplify this we have minus 10 i1 and minus 5 i1 that is going to give us minus 15 i1 plus 5 i2 and then so let's bring this um v1 let's bring to the other side of the equals to sign so that's going to be equals to minus v1 so what we are having here that this is our equation one so let's take this our equation one so now let's go to mesh two so for mesh two now the part for mesh two is what that's b c f g and back to b All right so that would be b c f g and then back back to b so that so that's a closed is a closed part all right so for mesh two start from b so the negative the first element you are coming across is what is the two ohm resistor so from positive to negative that's going to be minus two i2 and then for the three ohm resistor from positive to negative three ohm resistor current i2 that's going to be minus three i2 also from positive to negative three ohm resistor but the current is i3 that's that will be plus from negative to positive so plus 3 i3 so from f to g there's nothing here but from g to b we have a 5 ohm resistor so that will be from positive to negative that will be minus 5 and the current is i2 i2 also we have negative to positive that will be plus 5 and then the current is i1 I1 so equals to zero. So now let's simplify this. So the ones with uh, I1, let me make the I1 come first. So that will be five I1. So the one with I2, we have minus two I2, minus three I2, minus five I2. That will give us minus ten I2. So minus ten I2. So let's look at the I3 plus three I3 equals to zero all right so so now don't forget we already know that our i3 is zero our i3 is zero so we are going to substitute that it here so we are going to be having 5i1 minus 10 so let me be sure you are seeing it okay so minus 10i2 plus 3 into bracket zero equals to zero So let's continue on the other side so this will be giving us 5i1 minus 10i2 is equals to 0 don't forget 3 times 0 that's 0 so we are going to be having this now we can simplify this further as having 5i1 is equals to 10i2 remember if this minus 10i2 should come to the other side of the equals to sign it becomes positive so you are going to be having something like this so with this now we can also see that 5 is common to both so we can divide both sides by 5 so so divide both sides by 5 so in doing that we are going to be having 5i1 over 5 is equals to 10i2 divided by 5 so this can cancel this 10 divided by 5 will give us 2 so we are going to be having i1 is equals to 2 2 i2 so this year we are going to be taking it as our equation 2 so this is equation 1 here and then this is equation 2 so we have two values right we have equation 1 and equation 2 so i want to rub it off so that we can go ahead and analyze uh, mesh 3 no after analyzing mesh 1 this is what you're able to arrive at after analyzing mesh 2 you're able to get this value so let's go ahead and um, do that of mesh 3 all right so i've indicated the um, equation one and equation two so now let's go ahead and analyze mesh three so one thing is this that at the end of solving each of this mesh in any question you'll be able to get the value that you're actually looking for all right so let's, let's continue so for mesh three we are having the part is c d 
E, F, and back to C. So that's the part. So let's apply KC, K, KVL, catch up voltage law. From C, the first element you're having is this one ohm resistor. So that's going to be from positive to negative, that's going to be minus one multiplied by I3. So that's minus I3. So between D and E, we're having a voltage source positive to negative, that's going to be minus 10. Remember the voltage, we are not going to multiply by I3 because this is already in voltage. So from D to from E to F, there's nothing here, but from F to C, we are having a 3 ohm resistor. So for this 3 ohm, from positive to negative and current I3, that's going to be minus 3 I3. Also from negative to positive with current I2, we are going to be having plus 3 I2 and then equals to 0. So now let's simplify this. So let me start with the, uh, let me make the I2 should come first. So that will be plus 3I2. So you can just write it without the plus. So that will be 3I2. Then we have minus I3 and minus 3I3. That's going to be minus 4I3. So this 10, if you take it to the other side of the equals to sign, this minus 10 rather, this is minus 10, it will be giving us equals to, to 10. Now don't forget, I3 is equal, is equal to 0. So let's substitute that here. So we are going to be having 3 into brackets. Okay, so we are going to be having okay, 3 into, yeah. Okay, sorry, this is I2. This is I2. So this is going to be 3. So 3 I2 minus 4 into bracket. Our I3 is 0. Is equals to 10. All right, so if you are finding value in this video, please give it, give it a thumbs up, click on that like button if you are really finding value in it. All right, so now if you are to write this now, since this is already zero, so four times zero is zero. So we are going to be having three I two is equals to is equals to 10. And with that, so if you divide both sides by, by three, So in dividing both sides by 3, we are going to be having 3i2 divided by 3 is equals to 10 divided by 3. So if this cancel this, so we are going to be having our i2, that will be 10 divided by 3, will give us 3.333 ampere. So that means we've been able to get the value of, um, of i2 to be 3.333 amperes. Now, this is another, uh, so you can just take this as our equation 3. Are we following? So let me just indicate this here. So you can also note this down so we can just compute the values and then we get our answer. So that means our I2 is 3.333 amperes. All right, now let's go back to equation one. Now we already know that our I1 is 2I2, and we know our I2 is 3.333. And we can now use this value to get the, our value for V1. Remember, this is what you're actually looking for, V1. All right, so let me also rub this off. All right, so let me bring back um, V1. So this equation one, I can also write it, write it here as minus V1 is equals to minus 15 I1 plus 5 I2. So now let's substitute the value of I1 and I2 into this equation. So we are going to be having minus V1 is equals to minus 15 I1. The value for I1 is 2 minus 15 into brackets 2 I2 plus 5 I2. Are we following? So that means we are going to be having minus V1 is equals to, so minus 15 times 2I2, we are going to be having minus 30I2. Now you can go ahead and add it straight away from here, but I don't want to skip any step. You can go ahead and just substitute it from here, but let's just continue. We are still going to arrive at the same answer, plus 5I2. So we're having minus V1 is equals to minus 30I2 plus 
uh, I2. You can see we're having I2 and I2. So that will give us minus V1. This is V. Minus V1 is equal to, so this is minus 30 I2 plus 5 I2. That will give us minus 25 I2. Minus 25 I2. Now you can go ahead and multiply both sides by minus 1 so that we can just cancel out this minus sign. So that will be V1 is equals to 25 I2. Remember, we already know the value of I2 to be 3.33 amperes. So that means our V1 is equals to 25 times I2, which is 3.33 amperes. Therefore, our V1 is... So once, once you multiply 25 by 3.33 amperes, so we're having 3... 3 amperes. So what you are going to be getting is... 83.33. 3, 2, 5 volts. Don't forget your unit. So, with this now, we've been able to get the value of V1. So, this is the value of V1 when the current that is passing through this 1 ohm resistor is 0 amperes. So, before we go to the next video, which is under super mesh, um, if you have any question with this, uh, if you are confused anywhere, you have any doubts, just leave them in the comment section. And if you find value in this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are yet to subscribe to the channel, PA Academy, please do so. It's absolutely free to, to subscribe. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button. So I believe uh, with all the examples we've looked at under mesh analysis, you've had full understanding how to solve questions under um, mesh analysis. Just understand the steps and I believe you'll be fine. So with that now, I'll see you all in the next video under Super Mesh. And before I go, also check out our website, paacademy.co, paacademy.co. So thank you very much and bye for now.